Two things. Number one, I am super proud of this beginner SEO course, but it was actually making me really sad. I'm proud of it because I spent years on it because I actually had four courses that I redid, I changed the videos, I made them more concise and better. I think this is one of the better courses I've ever created. This is what I would give myself if I were in my first couple of years doing SEO. I truly believe a lot of this stuff is evergreen and it's super valuable. I'm super proud of it. But literally yesterday, I'm sitting right here looking at my paid products dashboard and I see beginner SEO and I'm like, oh man, no one's going through this. It was a paid product, but I wasn't selling it or launching it. It was only for my online impact members, which I only open up once a year. So no one was taking advantage of this. So I don't like being sad. And I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna release the entire thing right now on YouTube for free in its entirety. So that's what I did. All right. so. It is long, it's about three hours, which is actually way shorter than it used to be, like I said a second ago. I'm gonna split it up over three videos. Don't skip around. This very first module in this video contains a lot of super beginner stuff, but also laced with evergreen SEO strategies that will serve as great reminders, even if you're a couple of years into your SEO journey. So. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy this absolutely free, no strings attached, no upsells or pitches, beginner SEO course. I'll see you in module one. Watch it all the way through. Go through at your own leisure. Happy SEO. Is that a thing? Happy SEO? Let's get started. Beginner SEO. So right off the bat, I want to set some expectations. I got my notes here in front of me that I want to show you. We're going to talk about what we're going to learn, what we're going to dive through. Can you see that? And... I want to like spoil it for you right off the bat. My goal of this course is not to make you an SEO master. You're not going to know everything there is to know about building links. You're not going to know everything there is to know about how to produce the perfect content, how to use the fanciest tools like SEMrush or Ahrefs or Screaming Frog or anything like that. That is not the goal of this course. The goal of this course is to get you up and running in the game of SEO, we're going to talk about what I mean by the game of SEO, the long-term game, what to do on your blog, what to do to promote all those strategies and tactics and theory and, you know, Google rank brains and all the fancy stuff. My goal of this beginner course is to get you up and running as quickly as humanly possible. That's it. That is seriously it. To get from zero, not knowing anything about SEO, I'm going to assume you're pretty new in this course, to getting up and running so that six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, you will be a master of SEO. I mean that in the real sense of the word. Like I can compete with anybody in my niche. I can compete with the big brands in my niche on my topic. Six months, 12 months, 18 months from now. It takes time to play the SEO game. If you don't know that already, you're going to find that out very, very quickly when you start to do this stuff. But my goal is to take you from zero, not starting, not doing anything to I have all the pieces in place. It's going to take time to arrange them into the right puzzle, but I got all my pieces and I'm up and running. And now the only thing that's left for me to do after I complete this beginner SEO course, the only thing that's left for me to do is produce the content and execute the strategy. Did you get that? I don't know, that was a lot of big words uh, that I threw in there. Not really, that wasn't big words, was it? Uh, the only thing left to do after this beginner SEO course is to execute the strategy and produce the content. Time and advanced techniques and strategies that we'll talk about in my advanced SEO course or somebody else's advanced SEO course, that stuff comes later. It's not important to you right now. What is important is for you to understand what SEO is and what you need to do on your blog today, yesterday, tomorrow, this week, and this month in order to benefit from the long-term stuff, right? The long-term butt kicking that you're gonna do in Google. And that's the goal of this course. I think I repeated that like five times now. The goal is not to make you a master SEO. The goal is to get you up and running as quick as humanly possible so you can go ahead and start to build the juice in Google search results. So you can start to generate some organic backlinks. So you can proactively start promoting your content the right way that will benefit you for the long term. Up and running, as soon as humanly possible. That's 
now six times that I've said that on this uh, this little lesson here. So with that said, let's dive in. Module one is always going to be like the facts, the frequently asked questions like, okay, I'm completely new to this blogging thing, completely new to SEO. What is this? What do I need to expect? What do I need to do? How long is it going to take me? What are the you know strategies we're going to be going for? All that stuff we're going to answer first. So that said, let's dive in. Okay, so why choose SEO as a traffic source? Why is SEO so great? Why do we hear so much about it? Uh, there's two main reasons. One, let's actually start with number two. It's easily the most useful traffic source. This is the big one, right? That most people kind of realize already. It's incredibly powerful to drive not only traffic to your blog, but here's the thing, relevant traffic to your blog, blog, not blog, your blog even. Passive traffic that's relevant, yes, please, right? Passive traffic, traffic while you sleep. Now, you, of course, have to put in the effort up front to produce the content and do marketing strategies for SEO. We'll talk about that later. But in general, once the traffic ball starts rolling, it is passive. Today, I have got, let me show you right here, um, just 163, it's like 10 a.m. in the morning, by the way, 1040 a.m. in the morning. I've gotten 163 different users. That's not page views. That's different users, unique users, uh, this morning already, just from organic. No, I'm sorry. That was uh, all of them. That's going to be largely organic. I promise you that. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, 122 users just this morning already, just from SEO. <coughs> Excuse me. I have not promoted my blog any this morning. I've not done anything. This is all traffic based on stuff I've already done. And sometimes months ago, right? Even years ago, it's passive traffic. Eventually, once you kind of get the organic ball rolling, and like I said just a second ago, it's relevant. Why is it relevant? Because people are searching for something on Google specific and then landing on the solution. It's highly relevant to them, their problems, the solutions they're seeking, the knowledge that they're seeking, landing on your website. And it's just a natural, uh, I was going to say it. They are inclined to be impressed by your blog. If it's good content, if it actually satisfies their user intent, of course, which we'll talk about in a second, but it's relevant, right? It's not just some random person landing on a random article that they may care about or may not care about. No, the nature of Google searching for something they care about and then landing on your site means that they already have an uh, ex I don't know the word I'm searching for. You'll have to <laughs> give me some slack here. Uh, it means that they care about the topic. That's all I really wanted to say. That's number two. Easily, easily, easily the most useful traffic source. One more thing on this, actually, uh, before I move on. Google, in general, was meant to drive blog traffic. That's why Google exists. That's how Google makes their money. That's Google's entire business model is allowing their users to come and search here for whatever. I'm searching for this crazy little thing. Filmic Pro log to rec 709 LUT. Do you even know what that means? Probably not unless you're a video editor. But in general, Google wants me to find the answers to my question. They want me to click through right here. They want to show the best search results. They want me to send these blogs traffic. They want to send traffic to your blog. That's it. That's Google's entire business model. Their entire business thrives on the fact that they send traffic to your blog and everybody else's blog, right? That's number two. Number one, the process of SEO is also incredibly valuable to your readers. What do I mean by that? What I mean is in order to rank in SEO, in order to get in these like top spots right here, your content not only has to be good, quote unquote, in air quotes, who knows what that actually means, but it has to solve people's problems. It has to give them what they're looking for in Google, right? Else Google won't, won't rank you. They'll push you down to page two, page three, page 175. Who knows? In order for your content to rank in Google, it has to be good and it has to be helpful and useful to people. Does this sound like another little benefit? Even outside of Google, even outside of traffic and SEO completely, you want your content to be good. You want your content to help people. So the strategy for ranking in SEO is also aligned with helping people. It has to be, else you'll never rank in Google. Google wants to help their users. Your content has to help their users. So you solve all these problems by producing good, helpful, useful content. Does that make any sense? The process of SEO also helps your readers by you producing the best possible content. That's why I love SEO personally is because it aligns with my mission to help people 
to save the world, to make money by providing useful content. It doesn't matter what your goals are, what your mission is, what your purpose is of your blog, helping people, providing value in exchange for money. If you're doing this for side hustle, it doesn't matter. That aligns with the SEO strategy. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's move on to talking a little bit more about what is SEO? How does this process work in general? What's the marketing strategy that we keep mentioning? What does that actually look like? I am going to assume that you are a complete beginner when it comes to all this. And I want to kind of throw some terms at you. Actually, I have like a, a list of some definitions that I want to go through really quick. But in general, I want to introduce you to what SEO is, what it is, what it is not. So blogger you, you cool. blogger you user, you're going to get to know each other quite well throughout this video. Let's start by going over a few basic terms here, one by one. SEO obviously stands for search engine optimization. It's more than just Google. It could mean Bing. It could be YouTube, Wikipedia, any search engine that takes in user queries, user questions, like whatever I type in here, and then spits back out an answer page, uh, trying to point them to blog posts or resources or whatever. That's a search engine. SEO. SERP. You'll see this engine results page. What SERP means is this. When I type in how to uh, install a toilet. <laughs> That's fantastic. This, what you're looking at right here is the search engine, the SERP. This is the SERP. There you go. And I've said, uh, okay. The next two are going to take me half a second. On-page SEO and off-page SEO. Uh, I'm, again, I'm assuming you're a relatively new blogger or otherwise new to SEO. And so I want kind of what Google looks at. We're going to talk about that a little bit more specifically in the next video. But in general, there are two broad aspects of SEO. And I'm actually going to open up my blog here and show you something. Um, I'm going to show you two things, actually. No. On-page SEO and off-page SEO. This is like the broadest two categories that Google looks at when determining, hey, what shows up when somebody searches how to install a toilet? They look at on-page factors, I guess you could say, and off factors. And there's a lot more that you can go under that stuff. But in general, that's like the two broad categories, right? I'm going to go to a blog post. Any blog post will do. I'm just going to scroll down here and click uh, blogging tools. Perfect. Here's my own post. On page SEO, I control directly. Literally, when Google looks at this website or this blog post, it's looking at everything on this page. So what does that mean? It means the actual words. First of all, there's a title. Uh, here's some other text. I don't really know what that is. Here's a title of my menu. There's an image like back in here somewhere. There's these weird things. There's a bunch of text and images and all that great stuff. All that's on page SEO, as well as how quickly did this load? If I like reload it, like how quickly did it go? Was it like super, super quick? Ever did I get like a huge wait time as the images like loaded really slowly? You know what I mean? Site optimization is the other thing. You see, I wrote that down here. Factors Google looks at on your site. Everything you can control directly. Words on the page and site optimization. The big picture overview. This is what you have control of 100%. In fact, no one else has control over this except you. Everything you do in your content is on page SEO. Uh, how you format your titles and how you format your actual website. So what I'm looking at right here and how fast the website loads and we'll get into all that separately, but in general, on page SEO. Okay, moving on. Off page SEO, what is this? Literally everything else outside of your actual website. So I want to do even blog.com. Site ground at the moment, I have like all these website files and there's the text and images and all that great stuff, on-page SEO, off-page SEO is how many backlinks do I have? Roughly speaking, that's the most important part. There's maybe a little bit more to SEO, but in general, it's looking at how many backlinks do you got? Like, who else thinks this post is relevant? I know Pete thinks it's relevant. I wrote it. Like, Pete definitely thinks it's awesome because I think it's the, literally the best post on the entire internet. That's all my on-page SEOs else think. Google trusts or Google has to trust both of us, both me, because I created the content. I got to like look at what Pete did, what Pete thinks, and I got to look at what everybody else thinks. That's off-page SEO. I'm looking at backlinks right here. It looks like there are three referring domains with 10 total backlinks pointing directly to this post, right? That's what everybody else thinks. That's what Google looks at as off-page SEO. So 
if you're still with me. That is like the big, broad overview into just a few more definitions. I'll make this video a tiny bit longer. I want to go over a few other things that you're going to hear both in this course and everywhere else you learn about SEO. Just these three. There's a lot of definitions that you'll want to know eventually. But right now, I think I can sell anchor text. What the user sees, your readers, your audience, anybody who looks at a web page when they see a link, right? Okay, let's go through here. This is a link, Namecheap, right here. Let's find another one. Snappa, right here. Um, all the free stock, Pexels. You can see I have these underlined. This is the way they look on my site. Uh, what is the anchor text for this one right here? It is all the free stock. Those four words. That is the anchor text, right? The actual URL, all the free stock uh, of This one, short pixel is the anchor text. The actual URL, I'm looking like down here, by the way. Is actually do you even blog.com slash short pixel as my affiliate link for short pixel. But this is the anchor text. Got it? You're going to hear this a lot. It's basically your popularity determined by Google by a number of factors. What is your site's authority? What is your page's authority? Literally, like do you even blog.com has a certain authority in Google's eyes, and do you even blog.com tools also has an, a separate authority, a page authority. So Right off the bat, let me tell you this. If you use SEO tools like CMRush, Arefs, KW Finder, uh, Moz, any, any of that stuff, you will see they rankings. It's arbitrary. It's very general. It's not exactly what Google thinks my site. I'm not the 2.1 millionth ranked site on the entire internet in Google's eyes. I'm not. This is just an estimate. That's why they say in Ahrefs. Google's rank. But in general, how authoritative is my site on my topic? That's what authority generally means. You'll talk about uh, Google juice. <laughs> I'll use that term quite a bit. Like, what's your Google juice? How authoritative on any given topic? If I wrote about horse manure, this is that's a really bad example. I don't know why that came to my head right now. If I wrote a blog post on Do You Even Blog about horse manure, I probably would not have that much authority on topic. For that blog post, it would not have a great authority in Google's eyes. Why? Because I don't write about horses. I don't write about manure. I don't write about farming. I don't write about any of that stuff. I write about digital marketing and blogging, right? I have zero authority when it comes to horses. The way it is. What about you? If you have a personal finance blog and now you're trying to rank for how to grow tomatoes in a homemade garden, do you have authority on that? I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you've written a few posts about farming and gardening and stuff like that so far. Maybe Google sees that as authority. But that's what I mean by authority. It's basically your popularity. Like among all the sites on the internet, how authoritative is yours on your given topic? I think that's important. I probably should have put that down here. Last thing, index. Uh, I will ask, like, is your website... What do I mean by that is, does Google know it exists? When I type in site do you even blog.com we'll talk about uh this right here later site and then colon what i'm checking for search console which we'll dive into to check this stuff oh look i see results if it had zero results that would mean my site is not indexed in google google does not know my site exists um that's what it would mean but google does obviously because like google knows my site exists boom it is indexed. Whenever I publish a new post, it's not immediately indexed, like instantaneously, right? Google has to send out their crazy bots to like search my site and discover new podcast episodes I do and new images that I upload. It has to be found before it shows up in search results. That's called indexing. Got it? Good. This is what I want to conclude with in this video. What is SEO? It's trying to get to show up in SERP, Search Engines Results page, right? That's literally what this is. We're trying to get your site to show up and then have people click on it to bring you blog traffic. That's what SEO is, a very broad picture of SEO. But I wanna conclude of like what we're going to be doing next. The first thing we're gonna be doing is understanding user intent. It's gonna be the most important video you watch in this entire course. It's gonna be the most important thing in SEO Period. Without it, you have zero ranking, zero traffic. I mean, right? User intent. We're going to go over that in the next video or two. Then we're going to get your site optimized 
the very basic stuff, right? I don't want you to spend more than an hour on this, but we're going to go through, I'm going to show you what you need to do today, this week, this month, whatever, in order to get the basics of site optimization so Google can help you rank higher. We'll talk about that separately, but that's what we're going to do next. After that, we're going to have a very basic content plan based on keyword research for Google. We're going to do this together. And an hour on it, you're fired, right? At this point in your blogging career, I don't know what month you're in, month zero, month six, month 12, whatever. If you spend more than an hour on keyword research, I think you're doing it wrong. At this point, later on, we can get fancy. You can use tools like if you really want to, you can do advanced competitor research to try and like find the perfect keywords, but you don't need that right now. And anybody who tells you otherwise is selling you an SEO course like me, right? You don't need it right now. What you have in this course is we're going to get you a basic content plan. Now you're going to produce the content. We'll talk about how to structure and present your content so that you have the best chance of ranking. We talk about that in great detail, actually, because that's very important stuff to learn as soon as humanly possible with you all of your blogging career, you need to learn that now. So we're going to spend the most time on that. And then we're going to plan for the future. We will talk about backlinks and doing some guest posting and outreach and infographics and maybe some of that stuff that uh, you can use to generate off page SEO backlinks from other blogs and stuff like that. But in general, you shouldn't be obsessing over that right now. You should be putting most of your time and energy 98% into this right here banging out constant on a consistent basis that is pleasing to your users and therefore pleasing to Google. So that's what we're going to spend the most time on going forward. But before we do that, we have to understand user intent and get our site set up. So we're doing that in the next several videos. Let's go. All right. All right. Let's answer this frequently asked question. This fact facts here. How long is it going to take me to rank to start building traffic in Google in SEO? How long is it going to take? Seriously. Okay. I have several blogs pulled up here, some analytics, some stats. And right off the bat, before we go into uh, to this any further, I want to say it takes a while. That's it. Now, this is silly because it could take you a year. It could take you three years. It could take you four months. I don't know, but it takes longer than a week. It takes longer than a month. It takes longer than several months in order to really get the ball rolling. Look at this right here. This is Do You Even Vlog. This is my site. I did not do any SEO for the first six months. I just published. I did lots of podcast interviews. I got lots of good backlinks, but I wasn't actually blogging. I was podcasting this entire time right here. I started SEO around here with very difficult keywords. How to start a blog is an extremely difficult keyword. It wasn't until a year, what is this? June 2017. Here is June 2018, about a year later. Right, right in here. This is about a year. 2050, between 30, 40, 50 users a day. Maybe that's about uh, 100 page views a day, right? It wasn't until um, six months. There's six months. This is like last October, November now. It's really just starting to pick up. I've started to produce a little bit more content recently. Uh, I had one post in particular that was very uh, Christmas driven and that got a lot of searches. That's why this like thing is right here. But you can see in general, like it's been going up and it's been taking a long time. This is a year and a half after I started. Now, I'm not saying I stink at SEO. I target extremely hard keywords and I'm also a podcaster. I'm not blogging every week. Uh, let me show you a few other people's sites that might be this for one. This one's going to be extreme. I'll just tell you right now. The traffic value is a million in ARAS. Uh, let's start with Kellen, the savvy couple. He has been doing really great. This is really great. He started way back, well, let's just say a long time ago. A long time ago. He's had this domain. He started blogging uh, actively about January 2017, which would be a little over two years ago at the time of this recording, a little over two years. Now, he's doing great the past couple of months. He's really started to take off. Last summer, uh, about six months ago, he started this gradual incline. In the past two or three months, he's starting to skyrocket even more. But it's been over two years since he started, which was like right here. Started two years to get to this point. And he's doing really, really, really well now. Really well. Look at this. Like really well. Lots of referring stuff. So Dollar Sprout, Jeff and Ben, 
This is an extreme example. First of all, this is not their first blog. They've been blogging for a while past this. They had a ton of followers to just kickstart their blog right off the bat for guest post opportunities and traffic, especially on Pinterest. Um, these guys did not start from scratch and you are not gonna see these results, period. You just won't. I'm not gonna see these results. You're not gonna see these results. This is the exception to the rule, but they've done like amazing things in about a year. They started uh, November, super late 2017, and now it's early 2019. So about 14, 15 months, they have been able to grow like this. It's just incredible results. This is the exception rather than the rule. But even here, you'll see, that's uh, referring to mates. Where's traffic? Organic traffic, roughly this. Still, look how long it took. Like, it still took almost an entire year to really get to before the hockey stick. Now they're just tremendous exponential growth. They're just crushing it. But it took a while for these keywords to even take off. Now, did they start producing content right here? No, they started producing content way back here. It literally just took this long to get going. And you'll see there's some bumps in here. I don't know what this was. But in general, the huge crushing exponential growth didn't happen until a while later. And this is an extreme example. And that still was the case, right? Olivia, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this, <laughs> birdsofafire.com, uh, blogger, you student. Um, she did not do any SEO for the longest time. She has been, she's had this blog for quite a while. Uh, started doing SEO. She, a blogger, you student, like I said, hashtag uh, success story. Uh, started back in early summer 2018, about seven, eight months ago now. And at this point, she was lucky enough to already have Several referring domains, I believe, by this point. No, actually, she didn't. I kind of started, uh, well, yeah, yeah, a little bit earlier, about five, six months earlier, I guess, in general. I don't know what that is, but that's not normal. Uh, in general, like the backlinks and referring domains, you can see she had a few right off the bat. There we go. That's what I really wanted to show. Just because she's a personal finance blogger, she left some comments, she got some mentions and referrals, but she didn't start doing organic uh, like SEO strategies until six months later. And she's been doing quite well since then, of course, but still, that took a long time. That took a long time. So what I'm trying to say, the point of this video is to don't give up now and six months from now and a year from now, depending on your keywords as well, by the way, Dollar Sprout, these are much, 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 much easier keywords to get than a lot of the other ones. They're not super easy. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to discount what these guys have done over at Dollar Spout. They've done amazing things. Don't get me wrong. But it is keywords uh, that are a little bit easier than the digital marketing keywords, the SEO keywords. If you're trying to start an SEO blog, good luck. <laughs> if you're trying to do blogging keywords like me over here, uh, I'm just going to tell you it's tough out there. By the way, Jeff and Ben found this out too. They have a blogging blog and it was a lot harder. They got a lot better results on this personal finance keywords. Same thing that uh, Olivia has been targeting mostly over here. It depends on the niche. Right now, exercise, uh, paleo diet, keto diet, that sort of stuff is kind of a wide open field in terms of SEO. It's relatively easy to start ranking quickly for various stuff. Uh, so it depends on your niche. That's the answer to my question. How long does it take to rank in Google? A while. <laughs> Longer. That's the right answer. How long does it take? Longer. <laughs> Longer than you ever thought possible to rank. That said, it depends on your niche and the keywords you're targeting, right? Okay, you got it? It takes a while, don't give up, be patient. It depends on your niche, what you're blogging about. If you're doing digital marketing and blogging and SEO, those are really tough keywords. You get people like Neil Patel out there uh, and people like me competing against you for that matter. Um, personal finance, a little bit easier, but personal finance obviously still pretty tough. Um, food, also pretty tough, like recipe blogs, it can be tough, not all of them, but there's a lot to choose from there. Personal finance, uh, we already covered that, sorry. Um, exercise and dieting and food, health, nutrition, a little bit easier right now. That might change going forward. Parenting uh, is probably around that category. And then even smaller niches that are you know below that stuff, it might even be easier. So it depends on how the niche, your topic, how easy those keywords are. And other than that, longer, <laughs> right? It takes a lot of time to start building up backlinks, to start generating shares and stuff that's going to rank you in Google. It takes a while, right? I could have just made the video 10 seconds long. It takes a long time. You just got to get used to it. You got to play the long game. Sweet. Let's go. Moving forward. All right. This is the most important lesson in this entire course. 
I'm not joking. Over the next couple of months, over the next couple of weeks, however long it takes you to learn the ins and outs of how to produce the right kind of content, on-page SEO, uh, to learn about doing some guest posts for backlinks or strategies or whatever. Strategies, tactics, all that great stuff will be useless if you don't heed these words. Are you ready for this? User intent. You see that? Think about this. What does Google care about? Google doesn't care about you. Google doesn't care about me. This seems a little negative, by the way, but it's not, I promise. Google doesn't care about any of our blogs. They don't care about any of that stuff. What does Google care about? Google is a business. It's a publicly traded company. Google cares about, wait, is it a publicly traded company? I actually don't know the answer to that. It made me question myself now. Google cares about profits and bottom line and making its CEO happy and shareholders happy and all that great stuff. How do they do that? User intent. Google cares about making Googlers happy, right? When somebody goes on Google and they type in best chicken pot pie recipe, they want that person to get what they're looking for. That seems pretty obvious, but is it? Think about it just a little bit more. When people go, let's say you're on a travel blog, by the way, uh, how to travel hack. What does Google want to show? The best optimized page? No. The page with the most backlinks? That has something to do with it, but no. Google only wants to show what will satisfy that searcher, the Googler's user intent. They want to find the best chicken pot pie recipe, the best travel hacking uh, overview, instructional how-to page, if you will. That's why they're searching. When people start how to start a blog, what are they looking for exactly? A long how-to article, a video, a podcast audio, an image infographic, a short form quick win sort of thing, a product per se, a hosting package. I don't know. Do you know? The goal of this entire course is to help you understand how to satisfy user intent. That's it. Seriously, that's it. What does Google care about? Google cares about its users. They want their users to be happy, else Google doesn't make any money and they go out of business and we never hear about them again. Bing takes over the world, right? Google cares about satisfying user intent with their search results. So that's your goal. That's the big point of this video. Satisfy search intent. To satisfy it, first of all, you gotta know what Googlers are looking for. They could be looking for a product. They could be looking for best vacuum cleaner 2019 reviews or vacuum cleaner reviews. What do you think they're looking for? They're looking for a review, but they also have the intent to buy. So they need what will help them bridge that gap. How to start a blog, they're not looking for a product per se. You'll see a lot of advertisers advertising to those people because blogging is lucrative. If you haven't figured out already, that's what I do for a living. Uh, what about best chicken pot pie recipe? Are they looking for a product? No, they are looking for a recipe, specifically a how to do this chicken pot pie, which they're gonna make tonight for their family and their kids. They don't want it to take a long time, etc. right? Satisfying, this is what will get you in Google search results. It will get you rankings. It will get you backlinks. It will get you profits from affiliate links and leads into your product. This, it starts with this, user intent. By far the most important lecture I want to say lesson and lecture session section. Uh, the most important thing you'll hear me say in beginner SEO period, satisfy user intent. In order to do that, you have to figure out what are people looking for? And then you have to produce that content. Sometimes it's a video. Sometimes it's a blog post. Sometimes it's a product with intent to buy something. Sometimes it's a review. Sometimes it's knowledge. That's what people looking for how to start a blog are generally seeking, by the way, the knowledge, the steps they need to take in order to install the website, get their own domain name, set it up where they can start writing and start blogging and start producing content and whatever else their goals are, list building or making money, side hustles, whatever, right? Knowledge, user intent, understand what Googlers are looking for, give it to them. That's it. That's super simple and incredibly difficult. I get you, by the way. <laughs> That's why I make the rest of this course and advanced SEO and stuff like that is because satisfying that user intent is incredibly difficult. Um, and telling Google about it is even more difficult, right? Through the promotion, through uh, indexing stuff that we'll get to in just a second. But in general, I'm making this video a little bit long for a reason here, and that's because this is incredibly important. You must understand the user intent 
behind the keywords and search queries that you were trying to rank for. So you can satisfy it. That's it.